How much should I put down when purchasing a home? This is a common question among many buyers and especially first time home buyers. Today, we're gonna to go over the pros and the cons to give you the tools to make the right decision for your situation. Let's go. Hey guys, this is Cash Nice, AKA Cash Loans. And if you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe, ring the bell so you get alerted every single time that I put out content. And if you like this video, do me a favor and give me a like. Anyway, so how much should you put down when purchasing a home? This question really depends on the individual situation, on your goals, your desires, and what you want your outcome to be. This is a common question, and there are a few different schools of thought on that answer. Some people will say that you should always put 20% down, while others will argue that it depends on the individual situation. So what's the right answer? Let's start by busting one of the most common real estate myths, that you need 20% down in order to qualify for a mortgage. This simply just isn't true. There are many programs out there that will allow you to put as little as 3% down, and in some cases, you can even put 0% down. So if you don't have to put 20% down, how much should you? What is the right answer? This question is all about your goals. One thing I'd want you to consider is what is your financial position? If you have the cash available to put 20% down and your goal is to have the smallest monthly payment, then that would make sense for you as this will allow you to avoid paying PMI or private mortgage insurance. Another benefit of putting 20% down is this may make your offer seem a little bit more competitive in the eyes of a seller because they're going to think that, well, you could put less down and cover an appraisal gap or something like that if you needed to. Another advantage of putting 20% down is this could actually help you get a better interest rate at par or zero cost for that rate. Well, on the flip side, maybe you're a little bit tight on cash or you wanna use that extra cash for other investments. In this case, putting a little bit less down may be for you. Now remember, with conventional loans, the minimum down payment for first time home buyers is only 3% and 5% every time afterwards. That myth of the 20% down, that comes from the fact that with a conventional loan, you'll have mortgage insurance until you reach 20% equity. However, let's make a scenario uh, so that we can understand. Let's say you're purchasing a house, right? 20% down would be $100,000. Well, you could put 10% down, $50,000, and pay a private mortgage insurance, right? PMI. This PMI is calculated off of your loan to value, so your total loan amount compared to the value of your home and your credit score. So let's say you put 10% down and you have a mortgage insurance of maybe, let's say simple math, $100 a month. Well, let's say that you're in a high appreciating environment. So this house is gonna appreciate at, let's say 10% per year, right? Well, with only a short amount of time, maybe two years, you'll have reached that 20% equity and that PMI will fall off automatically. All the while, you saved $50,000. So really you ended up paying $2,400 over that two year period in mortgage insurance, but you saved $50,000 that you were able to invest in other assets. This may be one reason that you might wanna think about putting a little bit less down. Now, this would make your mortgage payment slightly higher because your loan amount's higher, and then as well, now you have that mortgage insurance. So it's important to think about your goals and discuss with an advisor the correct strategy and how to go about things. Another popular loan type is called an FHA loan. These loans are great for buyers with less than perfect credit. Really the only caveat of these loans is that it will have a mortgage insurance for the entire life of the loan. So at some point you might wanna think about refinancing. But if you have less than perfect credit, an FHA loan is a great way for you to build your credit. Because by owning a home, not only are you gaining equity, but by making on-time payments, you are building your credit score. Now these loans only require 3.5% down, um, which makes them a great starter loan or a, just really a great loan for any situation. 
One great little trick with an FHA loan too, if you're an investor, is these can be used to purchase up to a four unit property. Just one of the units must be a primary residence. So you could get into some really good house hacking with only 3.5% down by purchasing maybe a fourplex, living in one of the units, and then renting out the other three to pay for your mortgage. That's just a little tip. If you're a veteran or an active service member, you may qualify for a VA loan. VA loans are backed by the Department of Veteran Affairs and require zero money down and they have no mortgage insurance. The really only cost with a VA loan is they have what's called a, a funding fee. Um, in 2022, the funding fee is 2.3% for first time use and 3.6% for every time after that. However, this funding fee can be wrapped into the loan over the appraised value and really just allows the VA to be able to offer this amazing benefit to service members. Now, like I mentioned, the VA loan has zero mortgage insurance and requires zero money down. This allows a veteran to be able to, you know, have a little bit of extra money if they want to put some more down to help qualify for a bigger payment or use that cash for renovations, buying down the interest rate, among many other things throughout the process. VA loans are great. If you live in a rural area, you may want to consider a USDA loan. Now, you'll want to go to the USDA website or check with a mortgage advisor to make sure that your property actually qualifies. But if it does, these are some great loans. They actually require 0% down, they have no mortgage insurance, and they have pretty low interest rates along with flexible credit guidelines. So. If you do live in a rural area, I highly advise that you look at maybe using a USDA loan. Now on all these loans, USDA and VA, although they don't require any money down, you can always bring money to the table if you want to make your uh, monthly payment lower. If you're purchasing a home, it's common to question which loan type is right for you and how much money should you put down. That's why it's important to talk to a mortgage advisor, someone like myself, who can help guide you through the process and explain the different options that are available to you. If you're purchasing in Colorado, California, or Texas, I'm actually licensed in these states and I would be honored to help you out with your loan. But if you're looking to purchase throughout the country, I have resources in all 50 states and I still would be honored to help you out and point you in the right direction. So if you have any questions, please drop a comment or make sure to get in contact. Now to wrap this up, how much should you put down when purchasing a house? This all depends on you, your goals and your situation. So before you call a mortgage advisor, I want you to think about two things. Am I more concerned with the lowest monthly payment or keeping cash in the bank? There might be even a way to do both. Until next time, everyone, thank you again and have a great day.